The conversation now veers into the court process, election petition 2020. And of course, uh, that one that has been brought by the NDC's uh, candidate, John Dramani Mahama, against uh, the first respondent, the Electoral Commission, and the second respondent, Nanado Dankwa Ekufu Adu. It continues today in court, and uh, we've seen Asiedun Ketia testify as a witness. We have also uh, seen Dr. Michael Kwesa White, the two that initially we were told would be serving as witnesses. In an interesting development yesterday, we now have uh, Robert Joseph Metonunu, who is going to be in the witness box today. Now, joining us uh, for that conversation, Joseph Akablea, court correspondent. He's going to be walking us through what to expect uh, today in court. Joseph, if you can hear me, so let's start from yesterday and that development with regard to admitting uh, Robert Joseph, uh, popularly known as Rojo Metonunu, as a witness in court. In fact, uh, we got wind of that particular development at 3 p.m., uh, but prior to that, you recall on Wednesday, there had been a hint of uh, such a development. Uh, you recall at the close of proceedings, Mr. Chikata had asked that the court allows for uh, him to engage the bench in chambers because of a request that he had wanted to make about a potential witness who due to health conditions uh, the witness is unable to join uh, and be present in court and so that also he said explains why a witness statement had not been filed for that particular witness and so he had put in that re request uh, in order to meet the uh, justices in chambers and uh, we must confirm that at 3 p.m when we got the statement we reached out to our sources, and our sources did indicate that uh, Mr. Rojo Metununu is the witness that he was referring to. And so that statement has been filed. We do not know the form that the cross-examination will take uh, because we understand that there are some practical challenges that uh, we may have a unique cross-examination uh, taking place this morning. I haven't gone into the courtroom yet. So I was trying to go in, but it has not been open uh, for the press to go in yet. So I'm unable to tell whether there's any difference in terms of the setup uh, for this morning, Ben. So before we dig into why exactly we're going to have uh, Metal Nunu there in terms of what he has been saying, on a bit of a lighter note, uh, we, when we saw Pesta White, Dr. Michael Pesta White, in the stand, uh, there was talk about the fact that he had not done justice uh, to the petitioner for whom he was witnessing, that is John uh, Dramani Mahama. Is there any suggestion that this could have affected uh, you know, the case to the point where we had to have Rojo Metal Nunu? actually uh, be on the stand? I guess the, the point needs to be made that as far as the petitioners are concerned, uh, their witnesses have so far uh, performed admirably well. And so they insist that they discharge themselves quite well. And so starting from uh, Johnson Asiedu in Ketia to uh, Dr. Kwesa White and the other individuals, uh, they make the point that they have all uh, discharged themselves creditably. Uh, but you recall that when uh, Dr. Kwesa White did testify, concerns were raised about uh, why he's reporting on matters that he did not uh, hear himself. Uh, you know, these are in terms of the instructions that came from the AC chairperson. He did indicate that it was uh, Mr. Roger Metzunino who spoke to the EC chairperson directly. And so the question had been raised as to why uh, he's not testifying to those matters uh, directly since he has personal knowledge of them. And the understanding that we are getting is that he was to be part of the five individuals who are supposed to testify. And the only reason that he was not part of the initial uh, two that were filed was because of the health concerns that accounted for this particular delay. And so and that is the information that we have. It's the practical difficulties that uh, put him in a situation whereby a statement could not be filed earlier. And so uh, either than that, they, they have no concerns having him come over to testify. And they insist that their witnesses have so far uh, discharged themselves creditably. Now, we've heard from Metal Nunu. He's had quite a lot to say, and we see how that will pan out in court today. But there, there are a number of issues. I would like you to just break them down for us. He's spoken about the Electoral Commission not fulfilling its duties, some of its duties in the course of election 2020. He has spoken about the fact that he was hoodwinked, you know, misled, so to speak, for example, in the signing of the coalition uh, sheets when it comes to the Ashanti region. He's spoken about the faxing system, among other uh, matters when it comes to 
election uh, 2020. What are some of the crucial points that we should expect uh, Rojo Metununu to discourse on in court this morning or to be quizzed on in court this morning? So there is an interesting claim. Uh, this is the first time that we are hearing this claim in any of the documents that has been filed. He says uh, there's a difference of about 1,700 in terms of the votes, what was published on the EC's website by way of the pink sheets and the pink sheets that they were presented to at the EC strong group. And so a difference of 1,700 votes. And so that is a fresh allegation that has come up. The other one has to do with a claim that a Dr. Serebo Kweku, who we know as the Director of Electoral Services at the Electoral Commission, was coming in with results from regions when the fax system was not working. And Mr. Nunu says they did not even indicate where, uh, from where he was obtaining these uh, results or these uh, pink sheets, where he was obtaining them from, but he brought them over uh, to the strong group. And so that is another fresh claim that we expect will be interrogated. And then comes uh, the claim about being misled to sign uh, the pink sheets. And the point he makes is that he was told by the EC officials that once his agent has signed it at the regional level, the only option he has is for him to go to court. And so that is another issue that we understand uh, will be closely cross-examined by the lawyers in this particular issue. Then finally, the point about uh, what exactly the AC chairperson told uh, Mr. Nunu. The claim uh, that has been made by uh, Dr. Kwesa White was that they were instructed by the EC chairperson to leave uh, the strong room and go and confer. Uh, Mr. Nunu does not use the word instruct. He said he, they were told that we should go and consult with our flag, our presidential candidate. So that is how he puts it. He quotes saying that we were told we should go and uh, that isn't used, instructed, or asked. And so we understand that will also be another matter that will be closely uh, cross-examined by the lawyers for the respondents in this particular matter. So as, as we wrap up, uh, Joe, I'd like to find out from you, is it only uh, Metolunu, so to speak, that we're going to see uh, in the witness stand today? Is there any possibility of having the Electoral Commission's chair uh, there as well today? In fact, at the last time when uh, Dr. Pesa White I was wrapping up the testimony. Even a day before that, uh, the electoral, the Supreme Court ju judge, judges had indicated that if they finished with that of Dr. White on time, the EC chairperson would take the stand. And so it is our understanding that uh, if time permits and things are wrapped up in relation to this witness on time, then there could be the possibility that the EC chairperson takes the stand today. If not, then it will have to be at the court the next date. And the, the session starts at 10 today? Yes, that is so. Joseph Akable is our court correspondent. Thank you very much. Kudos to you for the wonderful work you've been doing. And we'll cross over to court uh, at 10 to give you all the information as they pan out.